let me just start by thanking uh, Francisco and, and the team to actually letting me do this for you. Uh, I, I know that this is a huge webinar too and, and people will not have as many opportunities as I would like to hear about Oracle Apex. So that, that's why it's even, it, it even means more to me than, than yeah, just to be able to, to present on Oracle Apex as, as a team for you all. Uh, what I'll be talking to you today is, is basically coming from experience of doing the migration from 5.0 to 5.1 just recently, or beginning of the year. And of course, if everything went smooth and well, we probably wouldn't have anything to talk about. <laughs> So that, that's, what, that's what I'm going to try to to sort of let you know to where to look at and what problems we had long way. It, it's basically, I thought as this as a compilation of um, sort of errors that came up and I'll try to explain them the best, the best way I can. Okay, I think we're good to go. If people are going to join in later, that, that's fine. At the beginning, it, we're going to have a slower pace, and then later on, we, we're going to dig into examples and, and demos. Uh, just let me start briefly uh, introducing myself. I'm a Apex ID manager for Australia and New Zealand. I've been working with Oracle for more than 10 years now and, and with Apex only for about, I would say, roughly eight years or just about eight years. Uh, some of you might know me through my Apex blogs. I, I see myself as an enthusiast. I always try to talk about Apex because I think it's an awesome tool tool, and, and I think more people need to know about it because I know it's most of us are running Oracle databases all, like at least. We, we worked on Oracle databases, so Apex is there hidden, and, and most of the times it's un underutilized. Uh, also, in, in New Zealand, I organize Apex uh, meetups. So if you have a time or, or you want to join in, please do so. Uh, you can find details from Apex.world, uh, and I would be happy. I think we're currently having 65 or 65 ish members which is I'm, I'm extremely proud of uh, about that I'm a conference speaker I organized also Apex webinar series as well uh, some of you might know me through AOP which is Apex and the latest uh, tool that we're trying to give out to community in terms of helping you print from Oracle Apex applications. Uh, before I really start talking about what we, I mean, in, in details, I'll give you a brief agenda and I'll give you a safe harbor thing. Yeah, the problem with my safe harbor is that this is particularly to my team and my sort of migration problems. Some of this will apply to you, but not all. So this won't be a cookbook, how you're going to migrate your apps from 5 to 5.1 or from 4 to 5.1. So it's going to just give you briefly an idea on, on what to expect and how to prepare, nothing else. That, that's why it's, and I wanted to use Hey Power, but Oracle always had it. So I thought it's convenient. <coughs> uh, so before we can, we can do the, demos and, and, and talk about problems, we're going to say what are Apex templates and sort of basically just cover, I'm sure that there are people uh, among uh, you who know what Apex is but didn't work that much or didn't work that much with templates, so I just wanted to cover up like a brief intro thing. Uh, I would say briefly, what, what are themes and templates? Basically, it's your, I think, every modern uh, web application tool currently or framework is having some sort of templates involved and it's the same with Apex. Uh, we have teams and templates and I think they've been here for forever, I think, since there was Apex uh, available. And what they do is basically they design and they they uh, predefine your user interface look and feel and that's what it's all about. Uh, previously with versions 3 and 4, they were you know how I'll talk about briefly how it went, and, and we'll see how it's differing from version five. And and 
the basis what you need to know here is they're not there i think nine different types if i missed someone i apologize but usually have breadcrumb buttons uh calendar labels lists pages uh <coughs> used to have pop-up lovies regions and reports and what happened when uh, apex 5 came along was there was a huge change and and it, it did take them i think more than two years to come up with this release and because it, it was a significant change and and one of the changes also involved reduction in number of templates uh, for example if you look at the blue jay uh, theme that i think it was theme 22 it used to have 99 or just about 100 templates and and or 100 uh, template and universal team has only 56 and and there is a catch how they how apex team did it and and we'll get just going to talk about it in just a sec and the key thing between version 4 and version 5 why i'm bringing this file because there's a spe specific universal theme that's coming on and the difference between previous uh, apex versions and universal theme is that Universal team uses modern uh, grid layouts and, and sort of divs as a basic of your HTML page, while others use tables. So the, the shift is significant. <coughs> I think we all, or some of you, I hope, remember this screen. Uh, I think it's from version three or, or just about there. So basically you had predefined teams, you would create your apps, you would select the team, you would work on it, customize it, and and eventually you would get your production application running, right? Uh, addition with five is now you have a team called, I think number 42, which is universal team. And, and what Oracle Apex team said that having all of these teams was initially good because it gave, gave you options of having different versions and sort of different interfaces for your applications out of the box. But eventually with the time it became a problem to maintain them all. And and why was this? Because each of these teams consisted of, uh, if I just pull in one of my, so if I open up one of my screens to show you what I mean. So basically, previously, for anything that you would customize, you would basically create a copy of your, let's say you wanted to do another another page. So you would create a copy of this page, you would modify it, and you would call this model dialog version one, and then you would change uh, visit model dialog to version two. So you would multiply this, and as you would go, this could grow into like every specific uh, type of the page had a specific template. Different with five is now you have a one version of template, but inside of this you have template options, and template option reduce the need of creating multiply or so many <coughs> templates and changes, and this significantly reduces the work that we have to do. Uh, and, and basically bottom line is every now and then or mostly on every app you would have to do some sort of modification. Some of us will say it's easy or some of you will think it's easy and, and there are many reasons why you would do it. For example, if you had an enterprise uh, identity to incorporate or put your company's logo or, or something that's specific to, to make it look and feel like other applications with your, with your uh, company that's one of the requirements you also wanted to have some sort of standards as a, as a enterprise or as a as a company uh, and I already mentioned template options with apex 5 and a, a new thing was team roller for me and, and I think most of us will agree is team roller was great when it came out and it allowed us as a as a users to so if i run one of my so if i run this just as a demo so that i'm not talking on a on an empty screen so if you do team roller the great thing about this is 
you can customize your apps without knowing any knowledge or minimal knowledge about how how it actually works. And and the good thing is, okay, you could do CSS and you can change colors. So, for example, if I say let's change something on my header and I say I want pink, so you can see that changes are directly on the screen. Perfect, but as you can see, you, this is not some something you probably want to put to production right? because it's looking horrible. It, it gave you options, but it also introduced a way of, of actually overdoing it. So just be careful in, in, in terms of how much you go with it. Um, but the good thing about Team Roller, everything you do and you change and you change well, and you're pleased with what you did, you can export and, and you can apply this CSS for any other <coughs> application or any other template you want. And, and it also gives you ability to say that and, and uh, with Apex by one, this can now be applied to user level. So user can choose themselves what style they want to say. And if I can add anything in terms of my experience on, on doing these themes and changing templates and customizing other people's application is try, if you are going to migrate to universal team, try to stick to be subscribed to it. So if you break subscription, you are basically again running outside of the box. So it, it's really important to stay subscribed to universal team. Okay. So. We, we we know roughly the basics now and and from experience uh, doing this I migrated lots of apps from three to four and I migrated apps from four two or four one to five so I thought I mean honestly I didn't think five zero to five one would be a problem so people came to me saying when are we going to do it? have plans for Christmas period and I thought it, a month should be sufficient for us to upgrade, test, and, and sort of put it in production. And I was wrong with that one month estimate, and you'll see why. Uh, I'll, I'll just take another second on this screen is, if you are looking at this image, it's probably, if you ever wanted to switch the thing, and if you ever wanted to migrate a uh, version of, of uh, application 4.2. I have a demo that I can do here. So if I go back, so basically I created a simple. If I run this, I created a simple app. You will immediately recognize that it's not universal theme. Now, you see. So basically, all I've done is. Uh, oh yeah, so I have to change one sec. I have to change uh, my. Uh, we, I'll just briefly do this because it, it's it's referencing a table that doesn't exist in this workspace. That's all fine. And I think it should be app. And we're just gonna do select stuff. Awesome. Okay, safe. So run it again. So basically, there was not, the, the idea is here not to give you like a cookbook, but to just show you how it's usually done, and and what things you need to do while you do it. So basically, I exported this from 4.2 environment, and I imported it in 5.1. As you can see here, just let me show you. I'm running from apex.oracle.com here, and if you have a look, I'm currently running 5.1.2. So and I'm perfectly capable of running that application in 512 without any customization or any change except for the, my reason source can change but that, that's irrelevant. So what I want to do here is is migrate this to version of universal thing and how you would do it. So you go into shape components, you go under teams and you create a universal team here. Just a quick heads up is before you even start to think of doing this, back up your apps. Anything you're going to do here is going to run over 
the settings and you won't be able to come back. So if you do, if you press switch theme, so basically what I'm gonna tell Apex is change my old theme and replace it with a new theme. <coughs> and there are two settings that you probably need to keep an eye on is I would recommend that you do, uh, you can you can do either of this, it, it's not a problem, but if you had a highly uh, customized screens with lots of regions and items and, and, and things aligned, uh, I would highly suggest you do this. So it's gonna reset everything, so basically after you finish this migration, you would have to reorder your screens, but I think that's gonna be less work than, than, than doing the first two. And I don't know if you were, if you took part on, on um, Oliver Lamb's uh, Universal Master Universal Team uh, presentation. He explained in, in details from their experience. Uh, he works for a company in Germany, and and they migrated a huge uh, investment company uh, website or, or APIC application to Fire One, and and he. Or five zero first, and now they they migrate into five one. But he explained how to do this in in more, more details. I, I roughly prepared this simple app where I'm going to do reset all regions and buttons, and I can say match templates. Yes. And what it's going to do? It will try to so match my old templates with my universal team template. Yeah, that's always a risk of running. Okay, so switching one thing. So you get a warning, and this is the step where you need to have your backup. After this, there's no coming back, right? So if I can finish this, and I say switch theme, my thing will be running universal theme app. So if you hit notice, so this is the look and feel of 4.2, directly imported into 5.1.2. <coughs> and if I run it now, you'll see that the screen should change and immediately you see problems, right? Why is this here? And, and you get a light background as well and there are a few bits that you might want to change now and especially if you customize it with Team Roller you would have to reapply your styles Hopefully you save them and you have them here so you can reapply them. And 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 you take it from there and you start changing things and and, and customizing your app or tweaking to work. And and you should be then running 5.1. So let's let me come back to my presentation. Uh, so before you want to do migration to new version of Apex. At, at that point when I was doing this, it was 5.0 to 5.1. What I would do is, okay, you read your documentation. So I have one of the screens open here. So just let me briefly come back. Uh, lovely, one sec, just let me scroll up. Yeah. So just to take you from scratch. So basically this is your documentation on, on oracle.com. You would say, uh, I want to see what our release notes, and then you read this. And I read that when I was migrating from five to four one, and nothing was ringing a bell. Not, not so everything. There was a minor thing that some things would be deprecated. Uh, some things uh, change how they work. For example, Apex Server uh, process thing is now as asynchronous. Uh, comparing to previously, you, know, you could make it synchronous. So, uh, and there was also one more thing that I uh, <coughs> HTML. So running your I'll just let me. Uh, uh, that's the one that was ringing the bell the most for me. So we had some of the processes running HTML DB yet which is, I don't want to say the old way, but that, that used to be a standard way before, and, and now they say it's been de-supported, and it doesn't mean that it doesn't work, so it still works. 
And but the only problem is you don't know when it's going to be sort of when it's going to stop working. So it's better to migrate to use Apex server process or, or sort of newer logic or newer uh, namespace like Apex server. So basically, I've done my part, or at least I believe I did uh, done part of my documentation. I read it, I prepared the plan, I tested it on an app, and I said, okay, we're ready. We believe we we are good to go, right? <coughs> so what we were looking at was we had roughly twenty to twenty five apps, and all of them were running things that were. Oh, I think I had two that were running universal things, and because they were brand new, and all of the other applications were running uh, all the versions of of uh, templates. So as I said, we did our research, we did planning, we backed up everything, we looked for something that we believe might be a problem, and, and then we said, let's go, let's do the migration. Uh, I separated my migration story in two ways. Uh, that we had the desktop applications and we had mobile applications. So I did a handle the errors first as a desktop, or what, what, what happened to us on a desktop migration. And then later on, we're going to have a look at the mobile one. Uh, if you want to follow up what I'm what I'm going to talk about, there, there there's a, a blog post that I wrote about it. So, and I can uh, you can probably open it and, and have a look for yourself while I'm talking. Basically, I'm going to roughly go through some of it, plus add a few more bits to it, and describe what was going on. So if you need the reference later on, you can always go back. So one of the first areas, or one of the most common ones that you will have is you running, you, you have a standard app, some uh, Ajax things happening, and you get something that looks like this, saying session state protection violation. And you go, why, why would I get this error? Well, th th there was a change between 5.0 and 4.1 where by default, some of the page items had a wrong settings for session state protection. And and if you if you look here, session state protection usually sets to restricted, or that it needs to be set to unrestricted in order to make it work again. Or if you don't want to make your items unrestricted, then you have to sort of figure out how you're going to change the logic of the. Ajax calls that you're trying to do. Because by default, Apex 1.1 is setting this to restricted, <coughs> and that's causing the error. And in 5.0, this wasn't the case. So there was a change there. The, the, this is one of my favorite ones. Uh, you, you run your app after you migrated, and you get this in your console log. And this was happening. So you had an interactive report, so if I, if I do just roughly to lead you through. So let's say we have an interactive report looking like this. And you say, OK, let me do filter. Yeah, so if I do filter like this. And as, as, as soon as you would go action filter, so you, you could do it. The problem was it was working here if you click here, but if you do action filter, the app would stop working and you would get this error on the screen. You would get this error on the screen. And and I, we had app with like 35 interactive reports and five or six or seven of them were failing for the same reason. And then you go, what's, what's going on? I mean, what, really, what, what's happening? And if I if I browse here just to show you what the problem was, just, just let me, yeah, so that's my description of the problem, and you get my details, and it was down to this part. Some of my, some of my interactive reports under, uh, under the property, so if I go here, under the properties, you can set, so in property panel, you can set your, let me 
select that interactive report and you can say static ID equals to something. And for some unknown reason, we have this simply put as, as a text. Let's say this is a great way. Something like this. And, and the original was a list of organisms with synonyms changed. And it was similar. This, this proved to be on every other report. The text was different, but it was long set with spaces. And in 5.1 and jQuery version that we're running now, this would cause things to fail. And it would only fail when you would do that action, as I said. So if you do, if you would do action, filter, and then try to select something here, it, it just the screen would be broken. Why this would cause an error and why this wasn't working in file or it was working in five zero but five one is now broken is still a mystery. Probably version of jQuery has changed. As, as I mentioned, you can find all of it on my blog post. <coughs> and and I can't blame Apex or Apex team for this. I think it just shows you how bad programming practice has caused you all sorts of errors. So in this example, in my migration situation, I had even to deal with that. And the problem is I probably lost half a day to find, because you have the screen working in 5.0, you didn't touch anything, you didn't change anything. In 5.1, it doesn't work. And there is, it might be a static ID. That was a new one for me. Okay, area number three was something that looked like this. And you go and, and First, you start digging and, and reading and, and Googling if anyone had anything similar. And it comes down to you have your, you had your uh, simple page that was doing Apex server process delete paints. And then you go, okay, there's nothing wrong with it, or at least in 5.0, 5.0 believe this is fine. And, and my and your page process, so basically what this, for people who don't know what Apex server process does, is basically called a, it, it's a way how you can call a peel SQL from your JavaScript or running agent call. And, and, and the process hidden behind, or peel SQL process hidden behind it was delete pin numbers, whatever that is, we don't care. So there were no parameters sent, there was nothing, just call that procedure. What seemed to do the trick was to rewrite the Apex server process from being Apex server process and delete pens to Apex server process delete pens and add additional configuration there. Oh, let me come back. You don't need any of these things, but I added them just for, for the sake of testing and to sort of let you know what's happening. And once you declared or, or you use your process in this way and with this syntax things were working fine. I was I was actually uh, probably something happened between 5.0 and 5.1 with Apex server process and, and, and they I think they put a more strict syntax inside of it that you have to use now and, and that was causing things to fail. <coughs> so Another error that was coming up was, I mean, it's not an error, but it's, it's a, a feature. You would have a standard uh, interactive report or any kind of report like this. You have some sort of columns that you selected, and one of the columns would be a hidden one, and it would contain, I don't, probably it's not uh, well escaped and everything, but an example that I wanted to use is, so it was doing, Select and then some sort of JavaScript that's going to fire when you click uh, a, a text or an image. I think it's image here. <coughs> and I have a quick demo that I can show you here. Hopefully, you all see my screen. Let me try again. Okay. Oh, good. So, let's try again. Yeah. So basically, you have a 
standard looking application and an interactive report and you select download your file downloads and now all of a sudden inside of the files you get something that you didn't want to get so I'm just opening an Excel and it, as you can see the first column now contains my HTML and going back to the presentation so basically this this was part of the source and for some reason all of the columns in fly one are blindly taken to have a export printing property set to yes so whenever you create a report and you select a column there's a property here that you can find that says do you want that thing to be included in an export or not and you need to manually go inside and say yes or no <coughs> And that was the root problem of my hair. So if, when I said it to know, basically you won't get your your things exported. Another one, so you know how the breadcrumbs work. So I only have one page, so I can't demo it properly. But let's say I, I had two pages, so you, your breadcrumbs adds up and you have links here. And well, when we migrated our old team into Fi1 and it, we didn't go to university team but just to, to run in Fi1 and you click one of the links and you'll, you get a broken link so let me show you what I mean by it oh good let me just scroll up I think the other side. oh yeah that's it so I have an example of th this is my old custom team and, and this used to be a link that would take you when you would press the home page icon and this is the version of the old template so as you can see all I'm doing is you have a link here where you're referencing app ID and session so nothing too fancy or nothing too high and in order to make it work we had to drop that Pref using app and session, and we needed to make it. Well, we decided to do it with JavaScript, where we replace the ref or to redefine the ref attribute to be app and session. And for some reason, now it worked. As I said, all, all of my presentation is, is sort of supported by my blog post, so I can switch back and forth just to give you a, a more detailed insight into what's happening. And once you change that to, to sort of be re-rendered, substitution variables would be fine. So basically what was happening is it would render the URL, but the app ID would still look like and app ID and session on. So it, it wouldn't replace the substitution string. And, and I didn't know the reason. So among other things that we found for migrating the desktop applications, there were many, but some of them related to uh, us changing the servers. So we had the wallet problems and stuff, but that's irrelevant. And, and some of minor ones were some of the dialogues defined didn't uh, didn't show up in, in, in front of the screen. So they, they would pop up and, and all our Selenium testing scripts would still work but when you actually wanted to use the screen, your dialog would be behind the screen. So you had to add the CSS line. You had to add the CSS line to make it pop up and, and change this Z index one. Uh, probably not the best way in my example to do important, but just this, the Z index is the point of it. <coughs> Another uh, change in behavior that we had to do was Previously, could use a field or field type called yes and no, and now that the in in release notes it says that it needs to be switched or the idea is to switch is to use switch item, but the switch item didn't allow us to do no values, which we preferred to use or we used before, and then just wanted to keep it on, and and then we went with list of values drop down where we allowed the no value. So as you can see, 
none of this was something that I expected. So, and I've written this, and we had a few more, and I'm just going to roughly run through my blog post to see if there's anything else after uh, that, that was the explanation for process, that was the explanation for link. <coughs> and there was one more that I added. He is. Internet Explorer had an issue with interactive reports because we had we had that line in our templates and basically we had to drop it from the template in order to make it work. Uh, so that was that was a summary of things that we've done on desktop side and now we can do a demo on mobile before we go into more details for mobile. Uh, demo for mobile. So I, I'm just trying to show you, if I zoom in a little bit, just so that you can see the screen. So the point is, you had a, an app, you had a menu that was custom, or that was an Apex menu, but then it was, if you go in, now you see another layer of menu, that one is a custom build menu. And there was, it's not a big app, like 10 pages, nothing that you would expect to have problems with. And I said, okay, fine, it shouldn't be a problem, but let's see what's happening. <coughs> Again, on the mobile side, we met a friend, Apex Server Process. So this time we were really using Apex Server Process, but we would get page items of null again. And as you dig in, this is the original process that we would use. And as you can see here, I, I un underlined the null, and it seemed to be that null is the problem of, of, of the cause of all problems here. And, and once you remove the null, process starts to work, but then I get another error. Then you say, you get the email adjacent error. And you open the, so basically just to, for what this Apex server process is doing is calling a application process called toggle favorite. And, and that's the toggle favorite process just doing begin, HTTP, say Y, and end. So just return Y. And this now became an email JSON thing because the JSON structure has been tightened in terms of previously it was fine to do just single quotes and return, now you needed to add another another quotes to it. Uh, if, I, if I go back to my blog post, so uh, I highlighted the null here, and solution was simply remove null, and then you get another error, which is JSON, where you change JSON to be in, enclosed with double quotation marks, and that's fine, then it works. For as you as you saw, we used a map at, on one of the mobile screens, and we were getting again stranger. Just unquote reference Google is not defined. And if you had a look at the page, and I think I even had an example of that page here. So if I do, so I want to save changes. Just let me quickly try to browse to it. Mobile. And I open page 15, that's my map page. So literally there was nothing to, so you have a simple map region, there's not too much, it, it's just setting an item, initializing the maps, and, and there, there was nothing that was screaming, it, it should be broken, right? And the problem was with, within a template. So we had a we had this Google uh, API included in in a page header or in a, within a page. So it was defined here and then as a here and and as soon as you would switch it down to be within a template, so that you don't reference it within a page or within a template, things started working again. 
I, I really don't know why it must be that how things were bending now has slightly changed so it wasn't picking up at the right moment just the reference to the JavaScript file. <coughs> uh, I mentioned that I had a custom made menu and and it was using big slide uh, JavaScript uh, library and what was happening menu simply wouldn't work after you click a button or you navigated from one page into the other so it was depending on what you did on the screen that it would just stop breaking and and the difference was so lots of the big slide javascript that we had if you have a look at this this is a a solution to the problem is we used to have uh, jQuery select using an ID, right panel link, and then do a big slide, whatever logic. And and there was a, and I think it, it the slightly mobile uh, generating uh, generation of mobile uh, pages has changed in terms of now Apex Five. If you navigate from page one, let's say this is a part of page one, to page five, what Apex is doing behind the screen, it's actually your page five now contains all the details from page one, so all the DOM for page one, and and as you can assume, using an ID, and now you have a one page that contains more elements with the same ID, things simply start stop working, right? And and of course you don't know that as you migrate, so this is a like, what's happening, and and basic the basic idea is not use an ID and in general probably it might be a best way to go is avoid IDs if you can for mobile and stick to the class selectors. <coughs> and then you fix that error and then for some reason you would click the menu and the menu would just be blank. So it would pop up on a side but the values wouldn't be there. The, the problem was that there was a condition on the page. There was a page zero, I think, if I'm not incorrect. And there was one of the regions, one of the menus, other conditions, set to it like this. And, and as soon as I removed one or one condition, Things were fine again. And then we come to another error, which I have a, a live demo for. It, it's really simple. You have a list. Uh, let me open it. Run. I created this, and, and as you can see, I'm running apex.oracle.com, so it wasn't particularly at that point related to the version of, of the instance where you're running. It was more with 5.1, and it's, I think the problem is still the same. So if, if you if you look into the details, if I can move this slightly up, I can, just so that you if, you, if you notice the link down at the bottom, how it's changing. So all the variables are fine. So it's translating. So basically, what I'm doing is when you click a link, I'm passing a few of the. I'm passing. I'm filling in page two station code and the station name with some values, nothing else. And as you click to it, all look fine. So I did pass my values in. Everything is looking good. But look at this. Look what happened with my with my link. My link started to get some sort of additional stuff that wasn't part of my initial request run right? and 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 the problem was so people uh, people will do something and then they used to do refresh and i don't know if this will break now yeah now this is fine so it's been fixed with 512 in 51 you will get more of these percentages along the lines so i can sh show you in my website on my blog post Oh, good problem. Many errors have been being displayed. Errors fine. Oh, yeah, there it is. So, as you can see, the percentage 252 would be added. 
and and if you would refresh the page, your page would just break. So if you, yeah, all good, and a simple refresh of the page would now break the page. Hopefully you can see, yeah, you would get an error. As you saw on file one two, that has been now fixed. All good, coming back to it. Oh, this is an addition for, for, for my previous version of this presentation. Uh, how like five one came out, we all started, yeah, we were excited, interacted with this here. I loved it and I still love it, don't get me wrong. But you had all of your apps running interactive reports most of the times, or in, in, as much as you could. And now interactive with this here and, and first inputs from Apex team was try to use interactive grid because at some point interactive reports will be replaced by interactive grid. And so I thought, okay, if you're doing new projects, you're migrating a few things, changing a few bits, do we just use interactive grid? Initially we said yes, and and I'm having this slide added to, to the presentation because I just want to warn you, it depends on what you want to do. Because interactive grid is still not fully operational in terms of to fully replace the capability of interactive reports. So if you wanted to do something like master detail, it's fine. Uh, if you want to replace an interactive grid that has huge uh, like pivot thing stuff or, or, or all these functionalities that you can do, I can, I can. So what I'm talking about is if you press action, you have like all sorts of options and you can do group by and, and you can uh, fiddle around and play and you get pivots in five one. Some of these features are disabled with interactive grid. So, uh, and we had users who are used to interactive reports. We would migrate the application to production and we forgot that people, people are actually using this that we didn't know. And they would ask us, why is this missing? We want to use that, we're missing that we want to have pivot and then you actually realize that I think that move to interactive grid was too soon. So interactive grid is capable of that, that there's lots of pluses when and why to do it but if you really want a full functionality of interactive people just be away. <coughs> and and I've written down buggy behavior. There are a few bits and, and pieces that are people finding out and, and especially in terms of uh, dealing with large set of data that I found out were causing problems for me and, and I tried to do a multiple master detail detail thing and manually process that and I had problems doing it manually. So just keep an eye on that. As I said, I think that the worst problem here was I, I plan for a month and it actually took me like almost two and a half months to finish this because I did the research and I planned but these bits are hard because you can't actually look for these situations you don't know when they're going to come up so lesson learned for me was stick to standards and when you make sure you have a quality assurance in terms of developing your templates the, the, the benefit for you all or most of you will be that most of your teams won't be custom made. All of mine were custom made, so I couldn't go back to something because everything I did I had to manually tweak that and, and it was heavily injected with JavaScript with CSS that was related to all the teams. So th there was lots of work to do and, and that's why these errors are, were coming up because some standards were not f followed. A uh, few uh, People will put references to files in the places where I never put them and, and these things usually cause the problems. And if I can let you as a tip and, and <coughs> to uh, to sort of have for, for your migration is check your Apex server processes and I'm assuming that might be the biggest issue that you're gonna, I mean biggest issue. If you did it the right way straight away, it's probably gonna be fine if you did something similar to uh, developers in, 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 in where I work now that it just caused errors. Uh, I, I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm close to uh, doing a 
finishing up the session. So if you have any questions, just put it in the chat and I'll be happy to answer any of it. I added, uh, I'm, I'm running a series of a, just Apex webinars on Alsog. And if you want to have a look, just visit this website and register. And that was about it from me for today. Uh, the idea was don't don't expect five one or five zero migration to five one to be smooth. And I'm I'm going to reference Oliver's Oliver's um, presentation from the other day or from Pacecog, where they migrated four two version to five. They had problems. Okay, they fixed it. And even with five zero to five one, there were changes within the universal team. So when you refresh the universal team, some of the CSS stuff and your screens might still be a little bit off and you will still have to do a little bit of work. So just plan for it and, 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 and don't hesitate. Go for it and you'll, you'll yeah, I'm, I'm sure you get it done. So it's, it, nothing is a showstopper, I would say. Uh, Francisco, yeah, I think if we don't have any questions, then I, I, I think we can slowly close it down for today and I hope you, I'll see you around for, for another APEC session, hopefully soon. And of course, if you have any questions, these are my details, just reach out, I'll be happy to help. That, that's one of the things that I do. Quite often people reach out and I help, regardless, it, it's not a consulting gig, it's just because people need help and I'm here to help, nothing else. Awesome. Thanks everyone.